funny people out there that's a silent but deadly but hopefully she didn't do anything anywhere but we'll start off dude and dude it's some dude news so both rj barrett and brandon ingram ex dude players had some pretty impressive games this first week in the nba obviously rj barrett the rookie he had a 26 point game which is really cool to see at least he's finally getting off of those woes of the preseason and summer league he wasn't looking all that great especially shooting wise i think that's why he's attacking the basket a lot more getting dunks and everything like that <clears throat> from those highlights that you can see which is pretty cool so happy about that and then ingram i just think he's getting a lot of this opportunity and ability to <clears throat> score as much as he wants to because zion williamson is out and a lot of those guys that they have they're either not performing well and he's just been the only bright spot for them but i'm pretty sure when zion comes back his numbers will go down and like i've always said and worried about brandon ingram is that he always plays too much or too hard and then by the time the later half the second half of the season comes around he always ends up getting injured he always ends up playing the same 45 to 50 games and then he gets injured so it's weird how that works but hopefully you can stay healthy for them and we'll see how that goes but an ex duke point guard in trevon duvall was picked fifth overall in the g league draft which is pretty cool uh it sucks that he's still not being able to get onto an nba team as of right now he's a bit, he's been, in my opinion better than a lot of the guys out there but we'll see how his nba future future holds up at least he's getting picked very high in that type of draft then also duke had a little exhibition game which is kind of like game before the season that really doesn't count so this was against the Division II champs. They went like undefeated last year and won the Division II champ championship. And they gave the Duke all their money that they asked for. They, it was a, it was kind of a blowout, but then the team came back and was hitting miraculous threes here and there. But as you can see from the highlights, that the, it shows that Duke was very good on defense, but the shooting was still pretty bad, at least their percentage wise. And you know, the freshmen are kind of looking like freshmen, which isn't really good because then some of these guys might end up staying another year to try to get better because they're probably not ready to go to the NBA at this moment, which was what I was worried for because there are some of these years where they project these guys to be really good and they're kind of just average and now you're kind of stuck with them. So then the next year's guys that they've that Duke has given scholarship offers to, they might have to take them back because there might not be enough spots available because there's only two seniors as of right now and then the juniors don't really look like they're gonna leave at any point soon. But Trey Jones, their leader, their sophomore, he had 18 points, which was good and he played some good defense, had a couple steals, but he was under 50% shooting, which isn't good. He has to step that up. And then same with the freshman Matthew Hurt, who I said they compared him to like the next Larry Bird. A lot of times he was always attacking the basket, which I thought he was a better shooter, but I only saw like about one or two outside shots that he made and a lot of his stuff came in the second half driving to the basket where he was a lot taller than some of those guys, but I just hope he can develop that outside shot and they let Trey Jones penetrate and dish out to him because yeah, that's I think where he'll be more effective instead of just trying to get in there and because he's not that big as a freshman, he's gonna get humbled in there. But Anaheim Ducks knew, so they made a pretty big trade. They traded for a defensive guy in Eric Goodbranson for Andres Martinson, a forward that was on the Ducks and a 2021 seventh round pick. So they're trying to show up their defensive lines, which is pretty cool. Hopefully he's a good enough player. He did get some playing time that first game. But then also a player for the Ducks, Josh Matson. He's out with a lower body injury. They didn't specify where it was or how long it's gonna be. So we'll, I guess I'll update you on that whenever he's fully healthy. But then they did beat Colorado Avalanche the other day, five to two. It's always good to see. They, I think they dropped their last game recently, but they at least got this W on the road. Uh, yeah, it was against Vegas, the next game that they lost. And I think, I forget who they played tonight, but they played some other team. So hopefully they can get back on the winning streak. They are 
I think, seven and six on the season, which is pretty crazy how many games they've already played, and it's only been like a week or two. It's amazing. But yes, congrats to them on that win, and hopefully they can get a few more. Then USC basketball news, Shaquan Aaron, an ex-guard slash forward for them this last year, was picked 20th overall in that G League I mentioned with the Duke player. So that's good for him. Hopefully, like I said, for Trevon, he can get onto an NBA roster soon. He's a pretty good guy. He can play defense at times, but he's a pretty good shooter and slasher towards the back at basket. So that's what the NBA you look for a lot. Then on to some Lakers news. So Lakers are optimistic about DeMarcus Cousins' injury. They think he could possibly come back for the playoffs. I just don't understand how that's going to work if they filed for a grievance to be able to get extra money to pay for a veteran later in the season. Which is kind of weird because if they like let him go or keep him off the roster, then they actually have more money to spend on somebody to entice them to come play for them. Because everybody's kind of looking at Andre Iguodala, the ex-Warriors player the last couple years. Because he's stuck in Memphis and he doesn't want to play for them, but they don't want to let him go just yet. So he might be available after the All-Star break. So the Lakers will have to wait that freaking long. But they're also saying he might be interested in the Clippers as well. And if he goes there, then I think the Lakers have no chance at all of winning the season. But LeBron, his total so far the first week, he is top in total number of assists, which is cool. I think it was like around 30. And then he is top three overall in the average like per game which is cool so at least he's sticking up there his points haven't been that great but at least he's assisting the ball still which is good then anthony davis he is top in the nba in total blocks and the average of blocks per game which benefits me even more because he's on my fantasy basketball team that i forgot that was a couple weeks ago and luckily he has been producing very well scoring a lot of points and getting rebounds and blocking shots so I'm happy about that but one thing I'm worried is that he might get injured and I'm, I'll mention that a little bit later of what I, I think he might get injured again but Frank Vogel the Lakers head coach is defending Contavious Caldwell Pope because he's been like shooting really bad and his defense hasn't really been that good but Lakers put themselves in a stupid position because they can't trade him because of a no trade clause in his contract so I just hope that he can just wave that and be able to get traded to wherever he wants because he's really sucking for the Lakers. Then they did beat Utah in their home opener. They did play in LA for the, with the Clippers their first game, but this was their first home opener, which was cool. You see all those highlights, a lot of good things going on there. And then their very next game, they beat Charlotte 120 to 101, which is really good. A good thing to get, get another bit of a win streak going. They play Memphis Grizzlies tonight, I believe. And then the AD Anthony Davis injury I was mentioning was that when he tried to do a big dunk, he was like like moving his shoulder a lot a few plays after that. But then a reporter asked him a question about that and he said, no, there's nothing wrong with him. So hopefully that is true. Then for USC football, so they go on the road and finally get their first road game. They road game victory, they beat Colorado 35 to 31. It's kind of surprising because it looked like they weren't going to get a W at that point, but <clears throat> luckily they did. And they, it was kind of crazy how they used Amon Ross St. Brown as a running back as well, which was cool to see where he's normally a wide receiver, but he is the thicker, stronger of those guys. So it wasn't that surprising. And he scored a touchdown off of that too, which I was happy to see. So hopefully they can continue to use him in various spots on the field like they did with Robert Woods, the ex-USC wide receiver. But a bit of NFL USC news. So Leonard Williams, the guy I was trying to get the Chargers to trade for, was actually traded from the Jets to the New York Giants. So he doesn't have to move far, but he is on a, a crappier team in my opinion. So we'll see how that goes for him in his future because he is in a contract year. And then Keaton Slovis, the freshman quarterback for USC, was named <clears throat> the freshman Pac-12 you know, Offensive Player of the Week, which is really cool. I mean, he threw for I think barely over 400 yards and four touchdowns, no interceptions. So he is off and on with his performances, but kind of trying to wonder if it's just the offense with Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator that's helping him out, or is it that he's really special as a freshman and they'll have to stick with him instead of sticking with the older guy who got injured in the beginning of the season, next season. So 
that should be, of course, interesting. Another quarterback controversy for the Lakers. But then Juju Smith, who basically beat me in fantasy football because the other guy had him and he did really good last night. But with that over 100 yard game, he had, he's now the sole possession of the record of beating Randy Moss as the most 100 yard games for someone under 23, which is still awesome. Of course, I've always championed for him because I wanted him on the Chargers as a second round pick or even a first round pick and they didn't freaking listen to me and now it's biting them in the ass because of how great of a wide receiver, you know, slash player he is. But I see that my I have about a video left in space, so I'm gonna convert this video, get it down, and then hopefully be able to finish up with a bunch of Chargers important news that came out. And we'll see how that goes because the trade deadline is today around one o'clock Western time. So we'll see what can happen with the news about that. And yes, hold on tight. party people so finish up with some Chargers news they did fire their office of coordinator Ken Wizard Hunt even though it was particularly weird after a, a win which I'll talk about later this weekend but yeah it's just as you can tell there hasn't been that much production especially when it comes to running backs I don't know if you can blame the offensive coordinator for that I think it's with the amount of injuries especially to the offensive line and when you didn't have your star running back because he was holding out for a new contract, didn't help a lot either, even though the running game and those running backs were performing very well in the beginning of the season before he got there. I just think overall, it was kind of, they are just getting tired of each other. And I know Anthony, Anthony Lynn, the head coach, is very big on the running game. And pretty much the past couple of games, they haven't even went over 40 total yards in running which sucks a lot especially when it comes to the NFL so yeah I think it was about time he's been there for quite a bit now they're gonna let the quarterbacks coach and sort of Anthony Lynn as well call plays for the rest of the year and we'll see if they stick with that that pairing or if they'll find somebody else to replace next season and who knows maybe you'll want to get a well, I'll get to that, we'll see. But Melvin Gordon, they put out a recent Vegas thing about his trade destinations where people are gambling where he's gonna go. But a lot of people think Detroit Lions are the very highest spot, but I don't mind it because it is the other conference, so it's whatever, and plus the Chargers already played them. But the Eagles as well, Philadelphia, same thing, NFC, I don't mind that. Uh, the Buccaneers and Bills, uh, Buccaneers, same thing, it's whatever. Just trying to get any type of talent back or even draft picks as well. But the Bills, they do play in the same conference, so that would be kind of tough. But I don't know, we'll see what they can give up for that. Uh, Bears, who they recently played this weekend, could be an option. They have a couple guys there that the Chargers could use. And then the Colts as well, which is kind of surprising because they seem to have their running backs unless they would be exchanging running backs which I wouldn't mind either but yeah it looks very awkward if he was over there and still playing in the same conference and that would definitely push out the Chargers I think because Houston and the Colts are going to be fighting for a wild card spot in the, they're in the same division so one of them will automatically get in but then one is automatically going to take up a wild card spot in my opinion. So it could be very weird when it comes down to the end of the season, how the Chargers get knocked out. But Chargers tackle Russell Okun had some good news. He was activated to the 53-man roster and played somewhat on Sunday against the Bears. He did get an injury with his calf, I believe. So I don't know how long he lasted throughout the game because, as I said, I turned off that game because the offense wasn't doing shizzle. And they were giving up a whole bunch of opportunities, even though they were playing well on defense. It was still just a bad game to watch, so I stopped watching halfway. 
But like I said, I'll get to that. Then they, I think that they should trade for Big Beasley, a guy who was a first round pick out of Clemson for the Falcons a few years back. But after his first year, I think he got like 15 sacks, which is awesome for a rookie. But then the past two to three years after that, he's only gotten like 10, which obviously sucks from a production wise, but they kind of said they only kept him just because they're trying to keep their other guys who have the same agents happy and they I guess they're having trouble trying to trade him so if the, if the Chargers could give up like a six or seven round pick and get a talented guy like that to add to what their best thing is so far on their team which is their defense then I'll be psyched about that to see what he can do in a contract year then they're saying that the main thing is that the Chargers should probably focus on before one o'clock today is to probably trade Melvin Gordon look at the left tackles or offensive tackles whether you have to trade for them or they're on the market to sign and then also a defensive tackle nose tackle the guy bigger guy inside to see if you could trade even though I did a video about that of guys to take a look at but it seems like none of those guys will be available as of right now but I guess I've already done this Chargers people then also that the Chargers are seriously considering a quarterback change next season and Phillip Rivers might not be in the cards because this is the final year of his contract and they have been really high on and, con and are considering drafting Joe Burrow, the quarterback from LSU, which is having an amazing season. He's probably one of the top guys as for a Heisman, which is the best player in all of college football. But once again, I think it's part of the offensive system, the new system that he has there, which is why he's throwing for so many yards and touchdowns when they haven't had a good, uh, especially stat-wise, quarterback at LSU in so many years. But he does have very talented players around him as well. So it's kind of like you throw him in a situation with the Chargers who always get injured and are crappy. Is it really that good? And I think if they waste a first round pick on that type of guy as quarterback, it's not gonna be good for the Chargers. So hopefully they don't do that unless they get somebody else. But I think they should go for offensive line really because they had nobody and then yes I kept mentioning it the Chargers played the Bears and they beat them which I just assumed the last video that they were gonna lose just because they really had no chance but the Bears offense especially their quarterback is just as bad at times as the Chargers and disappointing as well I mean they the Bears kicked a field goal to go up I think nine to seven at halftime with when I kind of stopped watching and they were, they were actually booing. The, the Chicago was actually booing their own players even though they were winning at the time, which is crazy. But yes, the Bears did miss a field goal at the end from Eddie Pinheiro, which kind of sucked because they, they, there's a lot of controversy where they probably could have went for another play to get a little bit closer for him. And maybe that would have been the difference, but it just veered off to the left and the Chargers escaped with the W right there. And Melvin Gordon got his first rushing touchdown of the season. So hopefully, I can start opening crap up and they start getting a lot more guys healthy back because Melvin Ingram, the defensive end, was did return and that defense looked really awesome this last weekend. Joey Bosa had two sacks as well, the other defensive end. So hopefully the defense can carry them when uh, now that their offensive guys will start getting healthy and hopefully they can make some trades right now. I don't know, I, I took off stuff to make space and hopefully they can get it. And, I know this part of the video is lasting a lot longer than I anticipated, but hopefully y'all stick around for this. But thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. I know that if there is a gigantic trade that the Chargers will make uh, today before 1 o'clock or so, I might do a quick video about that solo. Obviously, I'm not going to put it within this one unless I'm editing this one right now and something big newsworthy happens and I might tag it at the end of this video but if not just have to wait and see what they do hopefully they can do something because I think they should do something and hopefully this all goes good for them but yes like I said thanks for watching and we'll see and have a great rest of your day